Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Daniel here, and this video, it's part of a full series where I'm gonna show you how to remove and install many panels on your 718 Porsche Cayman and Boxster. There's a lot of videos out there, and they've even helped me get this apart, but honestly, the videos aren't that great, so I'm hoping that these are the videos you turn to, and if that's the case for you, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'm here at Elite Auto Films, where my car is getting some of the Expel Stealth PPF redone, and I didn't film taking these panels off, unfortunately, but I'm going to be putting them on now and in that process I'm going to help you understand how they came off and how to put them back on. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to remove your upper ductile spoiler on the GT4 but the whole bumper on any 718 as well as replacing that Porsche script logo here or your lower valence. Some of you want to put that GT4 lower valence or diffuser on it has those wings on the edges. By the way, you don't have to buy the whole thing. You could just buy the blades on the side. It just takes a little more work to install. Two things I want to say before we get started. Number one, I was not the first to disassemble this car. My first wrap shop did, and I can't guarantee they put the right screws in the right spots. Second of all, it's been about seven months since I did this procedure, so now that I'm editing it, I can't say I remember everything perfectly. So if you notice any differences, please comment below. On the 718 GT4, I believe it's 27 screws holding the bumper on. I'm gonna show you all the details on that in a minute, but this is where they are all located. And there's a few more for those of you with another model with say the retractable spoiler. For those of you that are a little more skilled and don't want all the details, here's the quick overview. On the GT4 to remove the bumper, we first remove the lower spoiler by removing these four screws and then two more underneath. You gotta remove each tail light shown in another video and there's two screws under each of those. We need to remove the center section of the diffuser which has six screws. And then there is a screw on each side where the bumper meets the rear quarter panels and each wheel liner has a screw pointing backwards. At the bottom of the bumper closest to the tire, there's a screw on each side pointing upwards. There's another two screws on each outboard side of the exhaust pipes pointing upwards. And between the exhaust pipes where the diffuser center section was, there are three more pointing rearwards. Those are all the fasteners, folks. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen that most Porsche panels are held on with Torx screws, usually T25, T27, or T30. So make sure you have all those. In addition, you'll need T20s if you have a retractable spoiler. You'll definitely want one of these metal skin tools. It's a metal trim tool that is way better than the plastic ones and the plastic ones just won't cut it if you plan on separating the diffuser or the upper trim from the bumper. With all these screws, it really helps to have power tools like an impact driver or electric ratchet. And to get to some screws, you may need to lift the car up for easier access. Lastly, if you're gonna be doing any work on the bumper like that, you'll probably want one of these portable work stands. You can get them at Harbor Freight for like $23. You can help support the channel by purchasing some of these items via the links down in the description, thanks. For the GT4, let's start by removing the lower spoiler. Open the hatch and you're gonna find four T30 Torx screws. Remove those and it just slides rearward. Now, if you have a retractable spoiler, go ahead and extend that. And then we need to remove the top painted portion. To remove that, you'll remove six T20 Torx screws along the leading edge of the spoiler and that painted part will come off. Underneath, you're gonna find two 13 millimeter hex bolts. You need to remove those and the washers under them. And now you're gonna have access to these two T25 Torx. The GT4 has screws there as well, but on my car, they were T30. Not sure if those are the original ones, but that's what was in there. The next step in the process is removing the tail lights, and I've actually made a whole separate video on that, so be sure to check it out. Link in the top right corner or down in the description, but here's the quick overview of that. To remove the tail lights, you need to remove the interior trim pieces here, so you can access this 10 millimeter bolt on each side that holds the tail lights securely. After that, you need to pull the tail lights from their socket using trim tools or my method using some tape, but be sure to protect your bumper first. 
Once you've yanked the tail lights out, disconnect them from their wiring and you'll see two screws under each tail light. Remove those torque screws. Okay, while you're here, we need to disconnect some electrical connectors. Take a picture of what this looks like here. We need to pull this black connector and the white connector off. And first you wanna unclip it from the metal frame and then you can pull it out and get those connectors off. These are actually feeding lights like your license plate lights and your side marker lights. And then on the driver's side, there's another black connector. You need to disconnect that. If you don't connect these, the bumper's not gonna go very far once you pull it off. On the GT4, you'll need to remove the center section of the diffuser. There are six T25 torques holding it on. Once those are removed, slide the center section aft and it comes out. This is gonna give you access to three more Torx screws hiding back here. Go ahead and remove those. If you have a non-GT4, you may find only two screws back here hiding. All right, now let's just remove the last of the screws holding the bumper on, and this is the same for all models, I believe. So first, there's the one holding the bumper to the fender. This one may be hard to get to. It does help to sometimes raise the vehicle so the tire can drop a little bit and you can access it easier. Remove that on each side. Next, we're gonna to go to the rear section of the fender liner. There's a screw in each of those. And then right under that, going upward, is another screw on each side. Lastly, there's a couple more screws closer to the middle, in my case, just outside of the exhaust pipes. Congrats, you're almost there. Now grab a friend, we're gonna take off this bumper cover. Protect your quarter panel with some tape in this section and then just peel back the bumper. It just sort of flexes out from under the quarter panel and that's gonna unhook the sides. And then you and your friend can carefully lift the bumper slightly up and backwards away from the vehicle. Make sure you got those electrical connectors disconnected. All right, we have our bumper out and on the stand. Now I'm gonna show you how the diffuser is held on. If you're interested in swapping out that upper trim with the Porsche script, that I've actually made a separate video about, so be sure to check that out. On the back of the bumper, there are three main places all those wires go. Number one, your backup sensors. Number two, the license plate lights. And lastly, there is one wire going to the side marker. Not both of them. I know that may confuse you, but the side markers are only lit up on the driver's side of the car. In, a, of course, North America, it's the left. And in the UK and other right-hand drive countries, it's on the right. So don't be surprised that you've got one that's only a reflector. To activate that light, by the way, use your light switch, pull it out, and turn it to the fog position. The lower valence or diffuser is really just held on by these 12 really stiff plastic clips. And that's why I say a plastic trim tool doesn't quite cut it. You want a metal one like I have here. So just work those plastic clips off and the diffuser will come off. You can replace it with say a carbon fiber one or maybe you want an RS one with those little wings. However, just so you know, you don't have to buy that full kit from Suncoast. You can just buy the wings from your Porsche dealer or wholesaler. The wings are about $180 each and you'll need some screws. To properly do it, you'll need to screw into your diffuser, but a lot of people get away with just some 3M tape. That's a whole nother process, but you'll find plenty of posts about it in the Facebook groups and forums. I'll have the part numbers for those wings and the screws down in the description. Those stiff plastic clips don't make it any easier to install this thing either. So once you put it back in, maybe you want to lube them up, but I was able to get them in. It just took a little bit of hitting with the palm of my hand to get them all to fully seat. Take a close look underneath and make sure they're fully seated. See that one there? It's not fully seated and the rest of these are definitely not. When you're ready to put the bumper back on, grab your friend and carefully, always carefully, bring the bumper back to its position. And you really wanna be careful with those bumper wings. They tend to scratch your quarter panels. That's why I told you to protect them. 
Carefully position the bumper past your exhaust tips over the top and tuck those wings back onto the rails at the quarter panels. Make sure you pull those electrical wires up into the tail light section. You don't want to trap them under the bumper and then you don't have lighting. With the bumper fully in position, you can start replacing the fasteners. There's two in each tail light section. You'll want to get the three between the exhaust pipes on my car, two on other models, and then the two on the outsides of the exhaust pipes underneath. You have the two on the corners right behind the tires at the bottom of the bumpers, one in each fender liner, and then one on each side where the bumper meets the rear quarter panel. Put your electrical connectors in the right positions and install your tail lights. Reinstall the two screws here in the top section of the bumper, and then we'll reinstall the duck bill or lower spoiler, and there are four torque screws that hold that on. All right, folks, that's it for removing and installing the rear bumper on your 718 Porsche Cayman or Boxster. Now, I don't know everything right off the bat, so I'd like to thank some other trailblazers out there like The School Bus, who posted these instructions and pictures of his 718 Boxster and removal of the bumper that helped me show you the differences from the GT4. Also, I'd like to thank Sean Hong for leading the way with some cool RS mods. You'll find his posts in the forums and Facebook groups as well. And I'll have links to some of those down in the description. So if you appreciate all this, please show me, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. I do have the whole front bumper assembly that I'm gonna be covering, but that won't be until about spring of 2024. So thank you so much for watching the Jeff Yolen channel. We'll see you next time.